All right guys, so imagine your favorite cheese board in salad form. Today I'm gonna show you how to make a delicious antipasti salad. It's currently my favorite salad of the summer. All right, so we're gonna start by making the dressing because I feel like that's really like the star that really helps bring everything together. I'm gonna start by adding one garlic clove that I've already minced into a small bowl some Italian seasoning to punch up the flavor, Dijon mustard to emulsify and bring it together, honey to sweeten it up, some kosher salt, and then for the acid in this one, I'm gonna use red wine vinegar. It's a little punchy, really tangy, but it'll be really good. So I'm gonna whisk everything together, and as I'm whisking, I'm gonna drizzle in the same amount of olive oil, and then you can watch it come together. And that's pretty much it for the dressing. I always like making the dressing at least the night before or at least an hour before I make my salad because the longer that this dressing sits, the more that all the flavors open up and it just becomes really, really flavorful and balanced and delicious. All right, I'm gonna set this aside and then we can assemble our salad. So I'm gonna start by chopping up some vegetables. I'm just going with the basics here. We have a Persian cucumber. I like the ones that are seedless so you guys can use whatever you have available and then cherry tomatoes just for some color a little bit of variety and then basil but we're just gonna chop them up so these aren't super seedless but this should be okay and then because I like them to be fairly similar size to the rest of the other salad toppings I'm gonna cut these in half all right and this part I definitely think is necessary. Some people don't like red onions raw in their salads, but I feel like it just tastes so good. I only recently gotten used to eating raw onions in my salad, so you can choose to leave this in or leave it out. Comment down below and let me know if you are team onion or no onion. And then for the basil, just give it a rough chop. All right, so I'm gonna start by building my salad bowl. I'm gonna use some chopped romaine here. I actually, I'm gonna be using a combination of lettuces, lettuce, lettuces. Mm. I feel like romaine is good, but I kinda wanna add a little bit more nutrients. So you can either use power greens or a blend of spinach and arugula. I love arugula in this. It kind of gives it a spicy, peppery kick. So add that in. And also, this is just how I do it. If you have like mixed greens, you can totally use that too. Just use that uh, by itself, whatever you have. All right, now we're gonna add our tomatoes. Just a handful, sprinkle it wherever. And then our cucumbers. I like building it up like this to look really colorful. Then for our protein, I cut up some salami. This is actually sore prasada. It comes in a roll and I just cut it into small thin strips like this. If you have just already sliced salami, fold it, cut it however you want. And then I just sprinkle it on top. I like doing it like this because then later we don't have to like toss it up. Then we'll add our basil, our onions. Actually, now that I think about it, this is probably more like an Italian chopped salad, or it could be an antipasti salad too. I don't know, they're kind of the same to me. But I'm gonna add some artichoke hearts. These are so yummy, they're briny. You see these on a lot of charcuterie boards as well, and I really like them in a salad. And then now we're moving into more of like a Greekish territory for salads, but I'm gonna add these pepperoncini because I love the crunch and also it adds another, and also it adds a really nice spiciness to the salad. Now for the cheese, I'm actually gonna be using two different types of cheese, but three technically because they're cut differently. Okay, so we have some feta here. You can definitely use um, mozzarella balls. Those are probably more true to an antipasti salad, but I tend to like feta in the salad more just because, I don't know, I just like feta in salads more than mozzarella. Then we have some grated Parmesan. And since I also have shaved Parmesan, we're gonna add that too. You can never have too much Parmesan, in my opinion, on anything. Pastas, salads. One final sprinkle of pine nuts. If you don't have pine nuts, you can use walnuts, almonds. Spoon the dressing right on top. And here you have the most complete, healthy, and delicious salad for lunch or dinner. I'm gonna try to get a little bit of everything. 
This is such a flavor and texture bomb. It's super hearty too. Today, it's 105 degrees outside, so I still need to eat, but I'm not gonna heat up the kitchen. I'm actually gonna be making something really interesting. It's a vegan poke using watermelon. It's gonna be super refreshing and we're gonna give it like the savory tones to our favorite summer fruit. So I don't know if you guys know how to pick out a watermelon, the perfect watermelon should feel a lot heavier than its size. So this one, even though it looks really small, it's quite heavy. And I always look for ones with like a sun spot where it's nice and concentrated yellow. That's where all the sugars kind of develop. So this one is gonna be good. So to make our watermelon poke, I'm just gonna cut it up. And for this recipe, I always try to use a seedless variety because taking seeds out, isn't really that fun. So this one is nice and crisp. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you guys, always knock it too if it sounds hollow. It's also pretty good, but this one looks perfect. Set this one aside. We're only gonna be using half today. So just remove the rind however you normally would do that. Got a little chef's treat right here. Mmm, that is a good one. So for watermelon poke, if you get a bad one, like one that's not that flavorful, I would definitely use it for this poke recipe. If you get like a really sweet one, just go ahead and eat it as you normally would. I feel like it would be kind of a waste to make it with this, but it's okay. The point of this is to not cook today. So I'm gonna remove the rind. I actually like the whites of the watermelon. It's, it gives a nice crunch and when you marinate it, it absorbs all the flavor anyways. So I'm gonna leave a little bit on like this. It becomes kind of like pickled watermelon. And now I'm gonna chop it up into about one inch cubes, just like you would with your poke, with your fish. It just smells so good. And then I smell the ginger and the garlic. I already know the combination is gonna be amazing. Well, it is, cause I've had it. <laughs> All right, so our watermelon's done. I'm gonna transfer it into a container and we'll set it aside. Okay, now we're gonna make our sauce. So the direction I'm taking this is kind of a citrusy miso. It's very tangy, it's very balanced. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a clove of garlic I've already minced, add it into another bowl. Then I'm gonna add my ginger, a little honey for extra sweetness, sesame oil, some miso. And then for the salty soy sauce component, I found this yuzu ponzu, which is like a Japanese citrus. Ponzu, um, yeah, I think it's just like citrus soy sauce. If you can't find yuzu ponzu, you can also just find ponzu, which is a citrus seasoned soy sauce. This one has lemon juice in it. Or, or if you guys shop at Trader Joe's, cause who doesn't? They also have this yuzu hot sauce that you can just mix it in with some soy sauce. Or if you want, you can just squeeze a little bit of lemon juice or orange juice or lime juice with your soy sauce to create your own. Honestly, it all works. So we'll add it into our bowl and give it a good mix, mix, mix. Give it a taste to see if it's balanced and how you like it. Mm, I like it. And then I like to add in my green scallions. I chopped up one, I'm gonna save half for later. And now we marinate our watermelon with this mixture. Our sauce is gonna kind of fall to the bottom, but it's okay. Just give it a good shake or stir it up every few mm, hour. So close it up and just kind of rotate it. Don't shake it because you don't want to break up the watermelon and just let it really distribute. Yeah. See, it kind of got all over. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge to marinate and just chill out a little bit. And it would be good after an hour, but it's excellent overnight. So if you have the time, make it ahead and just give it a good swirl. We'll call it a swirl um, every few hours, just so it kind of distributes the liquid. All right, so here is our setup. Depending on how you like to eat your poke, sometimes I like to eat it with just a salad, but I feel like I need a little something 
more today because it is just watermelon. So I made some brown rice. We made it in the Instant Pot because it does double as a rice cooker too. I'm just gonna scoop a little bit on the side or right on top. And now we're gonna scoop our watermelon poke. Look, the marinade just made it so vibrant looking. It's even more red and deep in color. And then for the toppings, I'm gonna keep it simple. We're gonna add some avocados to keep us nice and satiated. A little bit of radish, some cucumbers for an extra crunch. I like sushi ginger. We're not done yet. This Japanese barbecue sauce is one that I recently found and it's so yummy with like salmon, but it's so good with rice too, like a rice bowl. So I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit all over everything to flavor up our other veggies. If you like some creaminess to your rice bowl, a little bit of mayo and sriracha never hurts. I just like a little bit. We won't go too crazy with this. <laughs> and finally, we'll just garnish it with some furikake, which is like seaweed seasoning with sesame seeds and some green onions. Honestly, from the looks of this, you can't even tell that it's watermelon. It looks like the real thing. That is really, really, really delicious. It's refreshing. So much flavor, the miso marinade, mm. it's like nice and salty, but you still get the sweetness from the watermelon and then like the watermelon crunch still stays intact. If you guys have not tried watermelon poke yet, like I cannot suggest enough for you to make this. Today we're gonna walk down memory lane and make one of my favorite salads that I kind of grew up eating. Um, if you guys are familiar with soup plantation or sweet tomatoes, which is no more, this is my ode to it. We're gonna make the wonton happiness salad, my version. All right, so we're gonna make the dressing first and it's super easy. I actually went on like a forum to read through what everyone was trying to figure out and played around with it and I think we got it. So I start with the secret sauce, which is hoisin sauce, the same kind of sauce that you use for pho. It totally makes sense now. But I'm gonna add three tablespoons of it into a bowl. I'm gonna have the full recipe written out for you in the description box below, so check that out. Some soy sauce, rice vinegar to give it a tang. And because of the dressing that they used is actually called sesame ginger dressing, we're gonna load up on sesame oil and then enough minced ginger so that you taste it but it's not overpowering. One clove of minced garlic, a little bit of honey for balance, and a little bit of salt to round it all out. Now with a whisk, I'll just mix, mix, mix. So I made enough dressing for a week's worth of meal prep, but you know what else this is good for? To marinate some chicken, which is what we're gonna do. So here I'm using bone in skin on chicken. I feel like for grilled chicken, this is the best way to go because it just locks in the flavor and the moisture when you either grill or bake or air fry it. I'm gonna be air frying it, but I'm gonna add it to a container and then I'll just scoop on a little bit of the marinade onto the chicken and give it a nice saucy bath. I'll roll the chicken around in the marinade, let it get fully covered with the sauce. And then you just need to let it sit for about an hour if you're gonna use it right away, or just cap it up and leave it in the fridge overnight if you want a meal prep. And whenever you're ready to cook it, just go ahead and either grill, air fry, or bake. The way I like to do it is to air fry at 375 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the size, or until the juice runs clear when I poke it. And here's the air fried chicken breast. It looks really good. I actually don't use the skin part, so I'm just gonna peel it off. If you like skin, you can go ahead and eat it, but. It's a preference thing. And then now with the chicken breast, you just kind of shred it either with your hands or a fork, whatever is easiest for you. I'm gonna use my hands. Look, it comes out so tender and juicy. It's like the perfect chicken for salads, meal prep. And when you're cooking chicken like this, always check the interior temperature to make sure it registers to 165. That's when you know it's cooked. 
And just like that, we are ready to assemble. So I'm gonna walk you guys through each of the components. So a salad obviously needs lettuce. I'm just using cut up romaine here. You can buy it already cut, the package kind. It's good. I'm just gonna add a couple handfuls into my salad platter bowl. This gives us that nice leafy green color and vibe to the salad. But then I'm also gonna be adding some Napa cabbage, which adds a nice crunch and it holds up to the dressing really well. It doesn't get soggy. This is the same cabbage you would use for kimchi. So there's actually more than one use for Napa cabbage. Then I have some shredded carrots. Just add a nice handful. Some green onions, cilantro. I'm not usually a fan of green onions in salads, but I feel like it complements the dressing really well and it's missing if you don't have it in there. So the wonton happiness salad doesn't come with the next two I'm gonna add, but these are the ingredients I like to add at the salad bar. So I'm gonna show you how I used to make it. Grilled chicken. And then those mandarin oranges. This is like the only time I ever eat them, but the mandarin oranges and syrup, oh, it just belongs in the salad. And then of course, because it's our wonton happiness, I found these wonton strips um, in a package at Whole Foods. It looks like this. And it's super convenient because it's already crispy. Um, you can obviously cut up your own wonton strips and fry it if you'd like, but convenience. Finally, we're gonna add our dressing and toss it up. This is happiness right here. I'm almost done. I like to garnish it with a little bit more of the green onions and some sesame seeds. So this is one of those salads where I feel like the longer it sits, the better it tastes. Maybe because every time I went to soup plantation, it's been sitting out for a while, but it's good as is. So let's dig in. Mmm, mmm. Those are some happy memories right there. Comment down below and let me know your favorite memory of this iconic salad bar. And don't forget to crush that like button if you guys enjoyed this recipe. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.